Greetings, members and friends. This is the day that the Lord has made. We will rejoice and be glad in it. We're so grateful and thankful that the Lord has given us a day that we can share his word. And I am so excited to hear what God has to say to us. Let's dive right into the word of God. We're going to be in Romans chapter 12, verse number 12. And we're going to whisper a prayer to God and then hear what the Lord has to say to us. Bow with me, if you will, eternal God, our Father, we thank you. We bless you for another opportunity to hear what you have to say to us. We know that your word brings life. We know that one word from you can change anything. Our prayer is, dear God, that you would speak to every circumstance, every situation. God, we pray now that you would look on each and every one of us and give us those things that we need that our lives may be better. It is in Jesus Christ's name we do pray. Amen. Look with me, if you will, at Romans chapter 12 and verse number 12, and it reads on this wise, rejoicing in hope, patient in tribulation, continuing instant in prayer. That's enough. I want to talk to you from that particular verse, that passage of scripture from this thought, what to do while you're in it what to do while you're in it. It is mine to understand and believe that there are so many heroes in the Bible, those that were faced with difficult circumstances and situations that have overcome those situations without the aid of humanity. Those individuals have overcome so many obstacles and they're prevalent in our Bible today. And I just want to share with you that these are individuals who were able to overcome circumstances, situations that occurred in their life while they were in it. One individual comes to mind. His name is Daniel. Daniel gives us a clear picture of how it is that you can survive while you're in it. Daniel is in a den of hungry lions. But as he's in a den with hungry lions, uh, Daniel prays to God. And God, in his power and his might, shuts the mouth of the lions so that they will do Daniel no harm. And early that morning, Daniel walks out of a lion's den. Not only Daniel, but the three Hebrew boys as well, not worried about political gain nor being influenced by the crowd. They stand up as the king Nebuchadnezzar says that everybody should bow down uh, to his graven image. And those boys stand strong knowing that God is on their side. They said, we don't know what you're doing with all of this idol worship, but the God that we serve uh, is worth standing up for. And those three Hebrew boys were thrown into the fiery furnace. And as they were thrown into the fiery furnace, the Bible says that the fire was so hot that it burned those men who threw them in. And as they were in that fiery furnace, uh, the king comes down and says, did we not cast three men bound into the fiery furnace? And they said, yes, king. And the king says, well, I see four men loose in the fire and the fourth one looks like the son of God. While they were in the fiery furnace, God took the heat out of it while uh, they were in it. But not only do we see this from the three Hebrew boys and Daniel, but we also see it uh, from Job. Job was a righteous man, lived in us and did everything he could to be perfect and upright in the sight of God. And what happened with Job is the enemy came and said, uh, I know you got a hedge around Job, but if you remove the hedge uh, from around him, I'll make him curse you to your face. And Job, Job sitting there not knowing uh, what the conversation was, uh, but God said, do all you can. And so the enemy uh, attacks Job, and as he attacks Job, he kills uh, 
all of his children, causes all of his cattle and his oxen to be burned. And Job finally says this, while he's in the midst of all of that trouble, he says that the Lord giveth and the Lord taketh away, but blessed be the name of of the Lord. While these individuals uh, were in their circumstances and their situations, uh, they were able to lean, depend, and trust God uh, that God would bring them out all right. And I just want to tell you my own personal story that there have been times in my life uh, when I didn't think I was going to make it, didn't think things were going to be all right, but God somehow made a way out of no way for me. He somehow caused me <coughs> excuse me, to lift up my head uh, in the midst uh, of all of my troubles. He somehow caused me to be able to dry my weeping eyes and trust in him that everything would be all right. And so this text is tailored to teach us this. Paul writes to the church at Rome, and when Paul writes to the church at Rome, uh, he tells them, I want you to rejoice in hope. He tells them, be patient in tribulation, and he tells them to be instant in prayer. But as he starts writing the book of Romans uh, to the church at Rome, he opens up and tells them that I am not ashamed of the gospel of Jesus Christ, for it is the power of God unto salvation uh, to everyone one that believeth to the Jew first uh, and then to the Greek. Paul opens up the book of Romans and shares with them uh, that he's not ashamed of the gospel because the gospel, the death, burial, and resurrection will allow us uh, to have salvation. He goes on from there and when he opens up chapter 4, he's talking to them about promises and belief. He's talking to them about faith. And in Romans chapter 4, verse 20 and 21, he says that Abraham, he staggered not at the promises of God through unbelief, but strong in the faith, giving glory to God and being fully persuaded that what God promised, he was able to. To perform, he shares with them that you've got to have uh, you've got to have faith uh, in the promises of God. In chapter one, he tells them you have to have faith in God uh, in order to be saved. Uh, in chapter four, he tells them that you got to have faith in the promises of God that that he promised to those uh, who are saved. But then he goes into chapter 8, and I love chapter 8, one of my favorite chapters in the Bible. He says to them, Romans chapter 8, verse number 1, there is therefore now no condemnation to them uh, who are in uh, Christ Jesus. He begins to shape their mind and let them know that when you are in Christ Jesus, that you are a new creature, that old things have passed away and all things have become new. He lets them know in chapter 8 that they are heirs uh, and joint heirs with Jesus Christ. He also lets them know that they have help. Uh, they have help. He says uh, that the Spirit will give intercession for us that we don't know what we should pray for, but the Spirit maketh intercession for us with groanings which cannot be uttered. And I just want to tell you, there are some things uh, in my life that I didn't know what to pray, didn't know how to pray, but the Spirit knew exactly what I needed. Uh, and I may have somebody out there who can testify right here that God worked it out all right. I don't know how he did it, I don't know when he did it, but all I know is I came out on the other side uh, and all was well. He also shares with them in chapter 8 of his book, he says to them that all things work together for the good of them that love God and to those that are called according to his purpose. Can I share this with you real quick? Put a pen right here and tell you no matter what happens in your life, everything is going to work together for your good. Lift up your head, find strength, square your hips, Put your shoulders back and walk into your future because God is in control. Everything uh, works together for the good of them uh, that love God uh, and to those that are called uh, according to his purpose. He 
finally ends chapter 8, and when he finally ends chapter 8, he tells them this, For I am persuaded that neither death, nor life, nor angels, nor principalities, nor powers, nor things present, nor things to come, nor height, nor death, nor any other creature shall be able to separate us from the love of God, which is in Christ Jesus our Lord. He says that I have known enough about God uh, that there is nothing uh, that's going to separate us from his love. Can I tell you something? No matter where you are, no matter what's going on, God loves you. No matter what's happening in your life, no matter how many tears you have to shed, God loves you. I want to tell you that no matter how many enemies you have, no matter what they're saying about you, God loves you. Can I tell you this? I need to share this with you, that no matter what you did, and how long you did it, God loves you. He shares that with them and finally comes to our text in chapter 12. And in chapter 12, he tells them, <clears throat> he tells them in chapter 12, he wants them to know that they are to rejoice in hope. He tells them that they ought to be instant in prayer and he tells them that they ought to be patient in tribulation. And I love this about our God. He tells them, first of all, if you're going to win it while you are in it, uh, you must understand this. Uh, you have to have hope. He says rejoice in hope. When he says rejoicing in hope, I did an etymological study on the word hope, and it actually means this in the Greek. It's LPs. It means to look forward with confidence to that which is good and beneficial. He says, I want you not to look at your circumstances, your surroundings, what you can see with your eye, but he says, I want you to have faith. I want you to have hope. I want you to be able to look at that that is beneficial. That's, that's what he says. He says, I want you to be able uh, to have confidence to look to that which is good and beneficial. Can I share with somebody real quickly? My situation may be bad, uh, but I'm in a good I'm in good condition. My situation may be bad, but I'm in good condition. In other words, it may be bad around me, but in my spirit, I know that God will bring me out all right. It may, it may be happening to me. I may have a tear in my eye. I may not know what tomorrow holds, but I know who holds uh, all uh, of my tomorrows. He says, you've got to have Hope, he says, you got to be happy about something that is to come uh, while you're sad about something that has come. He, he says, he says, no matter what comes your way, it may cause you to feel sad, to feel broken, but you still have hope that you still know that there is a brighter day ahead. On up the road, far in a distance, we can see the light shining in the night. He says, you've got to have, you've got to have hope. He, he says, you've got to have, you've got to have hope. But then he says something else to us. He says, be patient in tribulation. If you're going, you're going to win it while you're in it, you're going to be able to deal with it while you're in it. He says, you got to be patient in tribulation. He says, there, there, there are quick fixes, but in order for you to get what you need, uh, you got to be patient in tribulation. I did etymological study again on the word patience, and it simply means this. It is hupomino. It is the word in the Greek for patience. It means uh, to continue to bear up despite difficulty and suffering. It means, it means to endure, to bear up, to demonstrate endurance, to put up with. It, it means that no matter how rough it gets, I'm still going to stand and wait on God. It, 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 it means uh, that, that no matter what happens in my life, uh, though he slay me, yet will I trust in him. It, it, it means uh, that no matter how difficult my situation may be, I'm still going to trust uh, in the name of the Lord. Uh, and I love this because Paul shares with them, you've got to be 
patient. You got to hoop a me no. You got to continue to bear up despite difficulty and suffering. And, and I just want to tell you that yes, life can give you some stuff that'll weigh you down. But, but, but the last time I checked, Jesus says that he is a burden bearer and a heavy load carrier. So he means that whatever it is that you're trying to handle, you don't have to handle it on your own. Uh, Grandma used to say this, I took my burdens to the Lord uh, and I left them there. And I want to tell somebody who's listening this morning, no matter what it is that's on your shoulders that's weighing you down, you have to learn how to take it off of your shoulders uh, and put it in the hands of God. And the last time I checked, those hands are better than all state hands. Uh, those hands can work every situation out all right. He says you have to be patient uh, in uh, tribulation. Second Corinthians, Paul writes to the church at Corinth in chapter 4 and verse number 8, and he tells them we are troubled on every side. He says to them, yet not in distress. He says we are perplexed, but not in despair. Verse number 9, he says, persecuted, but not forsaken. Cast down, but not destroyed. In short, what he's really saying to them is, no matter what life throws your way, with God on your side, you can handle it. He says it like this, if God be for you. He's more than the whole world uh, against you. He says uh, that if you're going to be able to win it while you're in it, if you're going to be able to survive it, he says uh, rejoice in hope. And then he says to them, uh, be patient in tribulation. But lastly, he shares with them in our close, he says be instant in prayer. Says be instant in prayer. And I'll just tell you, when I first read it, I thought it meant for you to just be able to pray just like that, to have something ready to talk to God about. But I did uh, a little study on the word instant, and it is protaskio. And protaskio means to continue to do something with intense effort. So it, it, take our instant quick right now out of there and put the Greek meaning in and it means to continue to do something with intense effort. It means that no matter how it is in your life, no matter what comes in your life, he says, I want you to continue to pray with intense effort. And somebody knows that prayer changes things. Prayer changes things. He says, I want you to continue to pray. I want you to be devoted to prayer. He says, I, I don't want you to be in despair about prayer, but he says, I want you to persist in it. He says, I want you to continue in it. And James helps us out. James chapter 5 and verse um, Verse number 16, the B clause says, the effectual fervent prayers of a righteous man availeth much. And I just want to share with somebody, uh, don't stop praying. I want to share with you, no matter how dark it gets, no matter how lean your friends get, don't stop praying. Even though it may seem like nothing is happening right now, don't stop praying because prayer works. Prayer changes things. Prayer will change your address. Prayer will change the amount of money in your bank account. Prayer will change enemies into friends. Prayer can change things. It says whatever it is that's going on in your life, don't you stop praying. It says be instant, be persistent in prayer. And I want to tell you this morning, no matter what's going on in your life, no matter what's happening, the good, the bad, the ugly, let me tell you, rejoice in hope, be patient in tribulation, and be instant in prayer. God bless you. It is our prayer that this word has helped you. Maybe there's somebody out there who wants to come to the saving knowledge of Jesus Christ. This same book holds uh, how easy it is uh, for us to be saved. Yes, Jesus paid a major price so that it could be easy for us. Bible says in Romans 10, 10, that if thou shalt confess, 10, 9, if thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus and believe in thy heart that God has raised him from the dead, thou shalt be saved. Bible also says with the mouth, uh, with, the, with the heart man believeth, but with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. If you're out there today and you want to be saved, 
All you have to do is open your mouth and, con and confess your sins and believe that Jesus Christ is alive and well. If you're there and you want to pray this prayer with me, you want to be saved, just repeat after me. Eternal God, our Father, I thank you for sending your darling son, Jesus Christ. I believe that he hung, bled, died, and rose for all of my sins. And so because of his resurrection, I pray, Lord, that you would cleanse me from all unrighteousness and all of my sin, that I may be saved. It is in Jesus' name I pray this prayer. Amen. If you prayed that prayer, the Bible says that you are saved. God bless you. May the Lord keep you until next time.